Welcome back to WWTA News. Thank you for returning for another episode. So, what is going on? I don't know. We got news articles. So, we're going to find out what's going on in the world with crypto. Because we got some articles about some crypto. Alright, first article. Swift in electronic bill of lading interoperability trials with two different blockchain providers. Swift says it's developed an API that uses the DCSA specification. Our proposed solution offers a highly secure single window that avoids the need for multiple inefficient connections, says Terry Hubert, global trade strategist at Swift. The goal of the proof of concept is to have visibility over exchanging EBLs across trade platforms with SWIFT as a connecting network. During a follow-up to one of the DCSA trials, EBL provider Bolero observed that three things are needed for interoperability. The first is a common structure for the EBL data. The second is variable party identities. And the third is the sharing of identification tokens, tokens, tokens between systems. Artificial intelligence is going to make this stuff happen. Cargo X agrees. By interacting through a connecting partner that serves as an identity proxy, a new level of interoperability is achieved that facilita- facilitates frictionless global trade, said Peter Kern, or Peter Karen, Vice President at Cargo X. SWIFT plans to share the details of the POCs later in the year and also start a second phase involving banks. So, uh, it appears that SWIFT, I mean, yes, it appears that SWIFT is going to get into the business of tracking and tracing and keeping up. We already have uh, the likes of VeChain that does this stuff to keep track of stuff moving around the quote-unquote world or globe, as some might say. Um, maybe that might be something they use, but, uh, it appears that Swift is trying to be involved in just about everything. So we'll have to watch this unfold as time goes on. Next article, Ripple's new CBDC platform aims to simplify issuing digital currencies. Blockchain-based payments and remittance firm Ripple has launched its central bank digital currency CBDC platform, allowing central banks and financial institutions to issue digital currencies. The move comes as more and more countries join the race to develop their virtual currency. The platform will allow central banks to manage and customize the entire life cycle of their digital currencies from minting to distribution to redemption and destruction, all in a highly secure manner. Furthermore, it offers end users e-wallets that will enable secure transactions. And uh, as we understand, when it comes to the central bank digital currencies, nations value that concept more than anything else because that's them bringing their currency that they can track and, and maintain and create uh, for their nation. So that's that's major for nations. It's going to exist because it's just their money, right? It goes on to say the technology used in Ripple's CBDC platform is built on a new private ledger underpinned by the XRPL's core energy efficient technology. The company said this energy efficiency would help reduce cross-border payment related carbon footprints, a challenge among some digital currencies. And again, here we are looking at efficiency and reduced prices. Uh, I'll say it again, Ethereum and Bitcoin cost too much to use for transactions. It's just, it's not logical. Goes on to say, for, for financial institutions that hold significant amounts of digital currency, the platform also offers management and participation in interinstitutional settlement and distribution functions. James Wallace, Ripple's vice president of central bank engagements and CBDC, said the platform would help central banks develop a technology strategy for central bank digital currency implementations. He added, The innovative capabilities of the platform will help enable instant settlement of both domestic and cross-border payments. 
reduce risk, and improve the user experience of quickly sending and receiving digital currency on either side of a transaction. And if you ever try or get involved with making transactions with digital currencies, it will blow your mind. And when you begin to think about how easy these things are because they run in applications, you just move some 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 money here, some money there, leave money sitting there. And then when you want to send it, it's just somebody sends you the address via a text message. You you copy it and paste it and boom, you send off money to whoever you intend to send that money off to. Mind blowing how effortless and easy and efficient this technology is and how it's such a great thing. Next article, XRP becomes top traded asset on South Korea's bit thumb surpassing Bitcoin. Um, and of course, for all the reasons said, it's cheaper and more efficient, right? So, ugh. All right, we got a Palau case study. It says after a successful pilot with over 200 citizens, the Republic of Palau is launching a stable coin pegged to the United States dollar as that is the currency they use, leveraging blockchain technology. With the stablecoin now, la- now live, and, and again, stablecoin is now live, Palau can make secure anonymous transactions, bridge d- disparate currencies uh, in less than three seconds, in, <laughs> in less than three seconds, oh, you know, where, where have I seen this? You know, you send the transaction, and, and as soon as you send it, three, two, there it is, right there in the next wallet. Where have I seen that? Uh, let's see. Um, it says you can make faster payments and minimize energy uses and overall carbon footprint associated with payments. Uh, in partnering with Ripple, and as the stablecoin continues to gain traction and adoption among users and retailers, Palauans will be able to purchase goods from participating local shops or conduct local transactions and make mobile payments using the country's stablecoin. With sustainability as a guided principle, they chose to build their stablecoin on a private version of the XRP ledger, uh, which is the first major blockchain to be carbon neutral using its native digital asset xrp which was purpose built for payments and doesn't require mining such as bitcoin to provide a fast low cost sustainable solution that's better for businesses consumers and the environment and this is no shocker or surprise um this this stuff you know if you've been in in this space if you for, for, the, for the past few years, anybody in the space, this has been constant, constant conversations. Like, you know, it's just a matter of time. We've all talked about it. Like, yeah, we've used XRP. We've used stuff like Stella Newman's. Um, we've used these, these fast acting technologies. And we're like, why would anyone want to use anything else for the transaction of money online? These things right here, they settle it. Why use anything else? All right. So... I mean, the technology speaks for itself, and this is why we're seeing more and more news and information about institutions, countries, nations, so on and so forth, using this technology. Next article, Atlanta Fed Reserve Bank mentions XRP as an international payment medium. The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, U.S. Federal Reserve Bank District, recently called attention to Ripple's business model and how the company uses XRP to meet cross-border settlement needs. According to the Reserve Bank, XRP is seen as an international payment medium. An international payment medium. These mentions are made in the latest policy hub iteration from the Atlantic Fed titled An Introduction to Web 3 with Implications for Financial Services. The report essentially highlights the promise of Web 3 and the use of digital assets. The report also underscores the growing adoption rate of Web 3 and blockchain technology among public institutions. Let's get that one more time. The Republic also, excuse me, the report also underscores the growing adoption 
rate of Web3 and blockchain technology among public institutions such as central banks. It calls attention to Project Mariana, a proof of concept introduced by the by the Bank for International Settlements, BIS, the Bank of France, and other financial institutions. Highlighting the global, excuse me, highlighting the goal of Project Mariana, which is the facilitation of more efficient cross-border settlements, the Atlanta Fed article mentions Ripple and Stellar are two notable blockchain-focused companies to introduce cost-effective value transfers. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Well, we've gotten to the end of our articles this wonderful day. I'm glad you all stayed and got through all these articles because I'm telling you, this is all amazing. Now, I'm not a financial advisor and I don't give advice. I just read news articles and I I talk about my thoughts on them. And I want to get you all thinking about these articles when you see them and hear them because major things can come from this stuff. I mean, you got to love it. Isn't it a good way to to go go into the weekend knowing that uh, all these institutions are using this technology and they're not running from it. And we're going to see more and major use over the coming years as full adoption takes place. You know, if it takes another year, who cares? If it takes two, who cares? The adoption is just over and over more more nations jumping in so yeah that's all i got today i will catch you all in our next episode